So we could do the substitution rule, U substitution, hence the meaning for my shirt, maybe we could find the answer here. But what did we do yesterday? Right, what does that say? It says the derivative with respect to x of the integral from a to x of f of t dt equals what? f of x. Well, what is x prime? Yes, a is a number. It's any number. Why? Because when you integrate it, it's a some function of a number. So it's a constant. It doesn't matter what it is. Okay. Just gave you a little help. I gave you the second fundamental theorem. It's in, in the yellow up there. Okay, guys? Hey, Matt? Phones should be put away now. Computers should be put away, so we don't need those. You're welcome. And, well, I want to, I'm, I'm telling you, you're going to have to use this. So what does that tell you you should do to this equation? Take the derivative of it. Why not? So let's take the derivative of both sides. Well, let's do it and find out. Okay. What's the derivative of six? Nothing. Now, what are we going to do the derivative of this thing? It's literally, it's d v x of the integral from a to x of g of t dt which would be equal to g of x. Where g of t equals f of t over t squared. So what do you put in for t? x. You guys see that? I just had to excuse myself from space. So this is 0 plus then what do you do with x? You put it in. So you can't integrate it. You don't know what f of t is. So it's f of x over x squared equals 2 times the derivative with respect to x of x to the 1 half. Yes? I don't know what to do. What does this imply? I haven't looked at this in years, so I don't know. So simplifying that a little bit and finding the derivative of the right side is 2 times, what's the derivative of x to the 1 half? 1 half x to the what? Negative 1 half. Where did what go? So f of x, let's go ahead and clean that up, I guess, over x squared, the 2's will cancel, it's 1 over the square root of x, or x to the 1 half. And then how do you find f of x? No. Multiply by a square. I'm not asking for f prime. I'm asking for x. If they ask for f prime, yeah, I could do that. So f of x equals x squared divided by x to the 1 half. So it's x to the 1 half. not an easy problem, because what you had to do was you had to think about the second fundamental theorem. I had to be thinking about this up here. Could they ask that on a multiple choice question? Yeah, that level of difficulty would possibly be there. Okay. Where did the dx go? What dx? It's a derivative operator. So what's the derivative of 6 and 0? What's the derivative of this? It's to put an x in there. 
And this is tied to derivative of the inside function with respect to x, which is just what? One. If that had been a y, d d y, then I would have had a dx dy there. There's no t. If it were dt, but it isn't, it's ddx. same basis if you add them instead of the numerator, if you just subtract them. Okay. Is that okay? Oh, we have to find A, don't we? Do we? Did it ask that? Oh, find, oh, find A. I did forget, I forgot to finish the problem. Found F of X. And A. Well, you know what? You know what F of X is. So we can do it. from a to x, what's f of t? x to the 3x, right? Oh, sorry, t to the 3x. Thank you. It's t to the 3x divided by t squared dt equals t square root of x. Okay, so it's 6 plus the integral from a to x, that's 4 half. So 3 halves minus 4 halves is 2 to the what? Negative 1 half equals 2 square root of x. Right? Because f of x is x to the 3 halves. So I substituted it back into this strange looking equation and put instead of x, which is a t, t to the 3 halves. No, I forgot to find A. Oops. So it's 6 plus, and we're going to integrate this. What's the antiderivative of t to the negative 1 half? t to the 1 half divided by 1 half, which is the same as multiplying by 2. Evaluating that at A and x equals 2 square root of x. I'm sorry, yours is so close to the front. <laughs> to do that, our slide is, so it's 6 plus 2 square root of x minus 2 square root of a equals 2 square root of x. Did I do that right? Put out to the 2 square root of x. They're going to go away because there's one on one side and one on the other. Six minus two square root of a equals zero. So you want to isolate your radical. So six equals two square root of a. So square root of a is equal to three, and a is equal to nice little problem. Are you doing your homework right? The trick to this was remembering this second fundamental theorem. I took it out of context because it was it was out of five four, but I put it in five five. Okay. You guys ready? Now we are going to find antiderivatives. This is a skill, and there are only so many that we can antidifferentiate. See if I still have any of these students left. If not, I can make some for you too. No, because you can't. Because you're doing, because the second fundamental theorem is an inverse operation. So it doesn't matter. You can't, usually you can't integrate. You can't integrate. Okay, remember these sheets? 
Okay, you guys? Everything that you can integrate is written on the bottom. You do not have to know the integral of the tangent or the cotangent. Okay, Marshall? Everything is down here. That's what you have to know. So when we get these pump integrals, we're going to have to transform them with a U substitution. Like the one that's on my shirt is not easy. I don't recognize which one it is. These are for composite functions. So looking at the bottom half of your sheet, right there, when you integrate a function here, I must see its derivative in there as well. There is nothing to undo the quotient rule. Tomorrow, we'll find out how we undo the product rule, integration by parts. And I think we have two days left, so that would be tomorrow, Monday. Yeah, we're flying through the chapter. We have a big thing on next week. Okay. Do you remember you substitute? I don't know what, of all the lists on that bottom of that sheet, I don't know which one that is. So I'm looking for a function, and I'm looking for its derivative. Some are easier than others. Um, oh, let's do circle. What do you want u to be? And this is the hard part, Zach. I don't always know. Eric says we want e x to the fourth plus Okay, I want to change it so it's something I recognize. So, now, anybody play golf with me because me? Ah, okay. And you don't, you don't know the rules of golf, though. And the rules of golf are when you take relief, you must take full relief. I like this example. If I my ball is on a cart path, I can pull the ball off the cart path without a penalty. Okay, Zach? The problem is, if I put the ball down, I drop the ball, and I have to have my feet off the cart path. I must take full relief. This happened with the pros where they have it and they've been penalized. So I drop the ball, I look up, and there's the tree right in my way. If I could just put it a little closer to the cart path and still keep my feet on the cart path, I could clear the tree. I'm not allowed to do that. I have to take relief. I must take full relief. You guys know that. So it doesn't, and it has to be the nearest point of relief. So it doesn't matter if I would like to still be on part of me on the cart path. That's against the rules. So it's the same thing here. Okay, you guys? Eric? When you make, when you make a U substitution, you must replace everything in the integral. You cannot have any X's left over. You cannot divide by X's either. That's another problem. So I have to be careful how I do this. Remember, from Rima and Tom, this is the height of my rectangle, and this is my base. So you really have to have the differential. On the exam, they don't get particular about the differentials. But what I found with, with the, the rotation problems, the geometry ones, that the students didn't do their rotations correctly because they were too lazy not to have the differential there. And the differential tells you the variable that you're working with. So you get penalized for not putting it in, not directly, but indirectly. So I'm going to have to find the u, and remember to do that, we take the derivative of that function. So then that was the derivative of this. That's it. Times dx. You must account for every x, everything that's in there. So we call this u, and I've got a little problem. I, I want x cubed dx. I don't want four of them. So Eric says, why don't we divide this by four? No, Eric's right. <laughs> okay. I will take x cubed dx and replace it with one-fourth of du. So I'm going to get one-fourth yeah, put your phone away for No, no, that's not a way. Take your headset out. Okay. And I lost track. Oh, this is the cosine of u. Okay, Eric, u. Did everybody see where the one-fourth came from? Because I, 
only have X cubed yet. I don't have four of them. So it has to be exactly substituted. So you guys got to be particular about your substitution. I can divide by the four. If I lost by an X, I can't divide by it. It's not going to be allowed. Now, do I know how to do that? This X cubed DX is the same as one fourth of DU. So I replace this X X X please. X cubed DX is equal to one fourth DU. So I'm going to take out the X cubed DX and replace it with the one fourth DU. Okay. It's going away. So it's one fourth. What's the antiderivative of the cosine? Sine of u. How do you know if it's right or not? Take the derivative. The derivative of the cofunctions are negative. Plus what? I can use whatever letter I want. I'm just changing letters. I don't want to keep the x because I'll be really confused. Could I do t? Yes. No, it doesn't matter. It's just a concept. No, but not because it's not the same thing. No, no, no. This constant could have the one fourth in it. It doesn't matter. It's just a constant. It's arbitrary. Okay, I'm not done. Hey, guys. Eric, not everybody in here has had to do substitute. So I have to teach you slowly. And this is just sign of you. But what was you? x to the fourth plus 2. How do I know that I don't need the 1 fourth there? I could put it there. doesn't matter. When I take its derivative, that goes away. I don't care what it is. Because when you integrate, the 1 fourth really operates on the sign. And then we could shift the sine term up or down, and that's what that is. E to the x doesn't work quite the same way. But we will deal with that when we get there. We're not there. Okay, how about the next one? John, how would we do this one? I'm going to do a u substitution. Okay, you guys, not everybody in here has had this. So du is equal to 2dx. Not unless you get a point that it goes to. No, it can't find C. Okay. Now, I want to get rid of the DX, so I'm going to have to divide by 2. You may divide by numbers. Not a problem. So DX is equal to 1 half of DU. So DU is 2 DX. It was in a different problem. Okay. <laughs> and that's okay to work ahead. You need some tough problems here. So, it's the square root of u, du, and it's one half out in front. Okay, or how do I integrate that? What rule is it? It's not squared. It's not exponential. It's a power. It's u to the one half. The only exponent you have issues with are when that exponent is when that exponent is negative one, because that gives me a loss. But the rest, I don't care if it's negative two. It's okay. So we got to add one to one half and get what? Three halves. Dividing by three halves is the same as multiplying by two. Plus three. So it's one third. And you was, what was you? Oh, 2x plus 1. So the 3 abs plus c. How do you know if it's right? Take the derivative. Or you should be doing this. Or do you need to do something else? I'm sorry. What? Okay, I'm getting there. Because I do have people in the room. I'm there. Okay?
I don't even know what it is. <laughs> I think this is one with an identity, but it might be the next one. Yep, it's an identity on that one. No, he's using it as four. But example three, are we ready to go on? Are we ready? How about if I write it this way? Does this make this one easier? It's the same thing. So u equals what? Small I think. 5x. So du is equal to 5dx. Now, there are different teachers who think in different ways, and they say, we don't want them to do you substitution. Just look at it and see. And I can look at it and see, but I have a lot of experience. When I think in the beginning, I don't think that's so easy. So we want just the dx. So dx is equal to one-fifth of du. Okay, so I'm left with the integral of the cosine of, now that's u, and dx is one-fifth du. You have to have all u's in there, no x's. So what's the antiderivative of cosine? Oh, we know this. It's the sine of u plus c. I'm sorry, what? It can just go ahead and plug the u back in. Yeah. I'm just trying not to do it too fast. Yeah, the next one's tough. Some of you may be trying to do example four by saying it's cosine four divided by four, but that doesn't work. Okay, let's try it. U equals the cosine of x, then what's du? Negative sine of x. I don't see a sine. So if I solve for dx, I have to divide by negative sine of x. Well, you guys told me to try it, so I'm trying it. So this is u. dx is the u over negative sine of x. I don't like it either. Now, yes, we're going we're gonna to work on it. See, when you go to college and take the next level, and you're going to get into multivariable calculus and such, You'll be doing techniques of integration. This is not the one you're going to see. Will it be on the exam? No. Oh, well, we're going to do it because we can. Remember, this is supposed to be equivalent. How about if we wrote this? Cosine cubed of x is cosine squared of x times the cosine of x. I didn't hear you. Kind of quiet. Okay, you guys. What is the problem? I can't have that sign of X there. Okay, Eric. Now, if some of you need a little extra practice with your substitutions, I do have a worksheet left over from AB. Okay, guys. Eric. Okay, guys. Why, why is this going to help me? Eric, do you need to go someplace else? I need you to leave what? Because you remember, I hope, that sine squared of x plus cosine squared of x equals 1. Solving for cosine squared, 1 minus sine squared. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I get the integral of, yes, you see that one, right? 1 minus sine squared of x times the cosine of x. Okay, well, well, now what are we going to do? Marshall, what are we going to do now? Because we have this trig identity here. It's a trick. I know you're right. 
okay, this is the trick. How do I know to do it? I've done the problem before. And when you take classes, when you do techniques of integration, it's going to be the same kind of thing. Okay, guys, Eric. No, you yet. Let's distribute that. Okay. You guys can go. But you're not going to be quiet. I need you quiet. Okay, we're going to distribute that. Plus a little too far. Okay, Nick. We're going to distribute that. That gives me the integral of the cosine of x minus the integral of sine squared of x cosine of x. Oh, I forgot to do this. What did I forget here? Here. Okay, Matt. Can we do the first integral? Yep. Yeah. This is what? Sine of x. Now we're going to have a little trouble here, but it's not that bad. How about if I write this this way? It's the sine of x squared cosine of x. You can do your substitution. Some of you might see it. I think you might be off by a, a negative sign if you don't give me your substitution. What do you want you to be? Yeah, it's an x. Okay, so what's b u? Cosine of x. Oh. No, that's why I wanted to do the u substitution. This is d u. This is u. So I'm left with. Sine of x minus u squared du. Matt, Sam. Matt. Eric. It's, it's fine. It's going. But I want you quiet. What is this going to be? What's the antiderivative of u squared? No, we don't need a calculator. It's u cubed over 3 plus c. Okay, what's u? No, they don't. They don't, but you If you change it back up. Okay, what do you get? Sine cubed of x over 3 plus c. Weird. Would you have guessed that was the antiderivative of cosine cubed? No. This is a trick. They're all tricks. I mean, I, on my CSC math book, I have, I have a section that thick of antiderivatives that people have done. You look them up. And now with the CAS, or with Wolfram Alpha, why do we do a lot with techniques of integration? It's a good question, but they still teach it in college. I don't think it's that for Wolfram Alpha, but it's okay. Okay, what about, oh, I know you don't know how to do that one. Do you remember that from Chapter 8? This, this is a collapsing sum. Remember, I told you, <laughs> you remember it too. Remember, I told you that we'd come back to this. So. Do you remember how to do the partial fraction? Well, this is the result of adding two fractions, one of which was some number over x plus some number over x plus 1. So let's, we're going to do it again. You know why? Why is this important? This is on the exam. No, I've only studied it for 20-some years. Okay, guys, do you believe that if I took these fractions and got common denominators, I would get something that looked like that? But I don't want you to be dealing with uh, common denominators, so let's multiply by the least common denominator, which would be x times x plus 1. It's called decomposition of fractions. You Okay, so we're decomposing, just trying to figure out what did we add, that's all. 
Okay. This is going to cancel, so I get 1 here equals A. Well, the X is, though, times X plus 1. Plus B times X. Yes, you're going to see this in your test. You're going to see it on your sheet sheet. Um, <laughs> okay. Now, X could be any number you would like, but we are kind of clever. Aren't we clever in this? I can let X be any number. If X is 0, then 1 equals A times 1. I found out A. A is 1. What's the other clever one? Negative 1. I want to make these factors equal to 0. And then I get 1 equals, that's 0, B times negative 1. And it won't collapse unless you get opposite signs. Okay, we want to integrate this thing. So it's the integral of 1 over x, x plus 1. That's equal to the integral of a over x plus b over x plus 1. A was 1 and B was negative 1. So, Eric, how am I going to do this? No, you're not. Kevin, what's this one? Natural log of absolute value of X. We must have, we must have that absolute value. Minus the natural log of the absolute value of x plus 1 plus b. Can I simplify those logs? It's the log of the absolute value of x over x plus 1. I didn't have any substitution here. No, it just happened to be here. It's in 5, 9. You'll see it again in 5, 9. No. I have homework hints in this section. Yeah, that's how hard they are, but I'll see if I have them in here. I don't know if I do. Yes, I do. Now, let's do ones with limits of integration on them. I have another one with five, six. Show me homework hints on that. Okay, ready? Okay, you guys. We're almost done here. Eric. Eric, you can be, do it quietly. Okay, you guys. When you substitute substitution, you substitution, and you have a definite integral, again, if you take relief, you must take full relief. Can I finish this one, please? Okay, you guys, let's do the first problem. The second problem is trickier. Now, we're going to do a U substitution here. I could do it without, but I don't know if you guys can. What would you like U to be? Okay. Okay, you guys. Might have. But you guys, 
What is the zero? Is that U or is that S? Okay, guys, it is a frequency of zero. Because here's what they do on the exam. They say write up, but do not integrate. So you have to make the full substitute for this. This is the X. That's the X, so that's a problem. So when you integrate this, you're going to put one half here, and then you're going to have the square root of U, DU, and if you put in 0 and 4, it's wrong. Okay, Marshall? If it's a free response question, and you put in the wrong limits, it's wrong. So if it's free response, you may work it through like this, put it back to X as an end, and then substitute the values back in. But they often do on the multiple choice questions and say, find an integral that's equal to. So this would be A, and A would have 0 and 4. There's your distraction. Wrong. I'm going to have to, but remember what I said. When you do your substitution, you must substitute everything. So that's why answer A is wrong. Here's my answer B. It's 1 half, square root of U, DU, and let's figure out what would make it right. If X is equal to 4, what's U equal to? 2 times 4 plus 1. Not if x is equal to 0, u equals 2 times 0 plus 1. Okay? That one's correct. They're going to ask you that. You get the same result. Now, do you want to finish integrating it? Well, you have to evaluate with the fundamental theorem. I'm not sure you need it. Okay? Let's try one we haven't done. Okay, your next quiz will probably be next Tuesday, and it will include a 5 1 through 5 5. It will not have 5 6 in it. However, 5 6 will be quizzed by itself. A real short little quiz. Well, that works. And 5 6 is tough. It's a BC cup. It's No. 228, the last day of the month. Okay, you guys, how are we going to do this one? What do you want you to be? Alan, what do you want you to be? Okay. What do you want you to be? What's you? I don't know. It's the Alan of X. I don't know that either. So what's D U? One over X D X. Now, if you have a problem with this one, I have it on the board and I have it written separately like that. That helps you. I thought it was a much nicer way to do it. Okay, Eric. Eric. Okay. So we are going to integrate this, and this is going to be U. And this is going to be du. And when x equals e, what is u? What's the natural log of e? Oh, that sounds good. <laughs> and when x equals 1, I get u equals the log of 1, which is 0. So now this is easy to do. What's the antiderivative of this one? u squared over 2 evaluated at 0 and 1, which is 1 half minus 2. Good. Okay, you really need to do these problems. They are hard. Now, I already talked about the symmetry thing, but here it is all written up. I talked about it yesterday. Okay, this, pro this section is due tomorrow. We need to fly through this. We still have a lot more to get done of BC topics. 5, 6 is a BC topic. I have to look at 5, 7. I think it's, it's, I have stars, but it must be BC. Come on. I don't have the books memorized. I know it seems like I do, but I don't. Yeah, 5, 6 is integration by parts. Um, oh, we don't have to do 5, 7. 
Oh, the park of fractions are there. Yes, I only have four problems to find on that. Yes, we do have to do that. And then, um, and then we have improper integrals, and that finishes the chapter. We still have chapter six, chapter seven, and polars to do. So we have a lot left to do. We still have time right now to be working in class. So I have some of these. I gave you, I don't know if that's the right one. I gave you the uh, hints, but that may be the wrong sheet. I'm not sure.